Three MMA scene now coming at you once again with another fight review. This time we're going to UFC Fight Night 132, Cowboy vs. Edwards, aka UFC Fight Night Singapore. We're coming to the women's flyweight division. We have Jiyeon Kim out of South Korea uh, coming in with a record of 7 1 and 2 versus Melinda Fabian out of Hungary coming in with a record of 4 3 and 2. Now, this was a fight that really flew under the radar uh, and it's I mostly I blame the U actually I, not mostly I entirely blame the UFC on this because they did nothing to say that this fight was happening it wasn't even put on to the website until like a day or two at like at most 48 hours before the fight was announced was when they put this on the website and that's a shame because yes it was the opening fight and most opening fights go, you know, unheralded. But they didn't, like, nothing to advertise this fight. And it's, I say it's a shame because it was actually a very good fight. Um, if you are a fan of striking and you hate, you know, the ground game, then this was definitely a fight for you. Um, you had a boxer in Jiyeon Kim versus um, apparently a Kyoku Shinkai karate representative in uh, Melinda Fabian. Um, you know, the, uh, the I, I would say the real story of this fight came down to uh, a battle of the right hands. Um, Jiyeon Kim, very good um, use of her right hand. You know, she kept fighting it like almost over and over and over again. Um, very good at stalking Fabian. You know, throughout the first round, she would stalk Fabian down. And, um, you know, Kim she, Kim kept it very simple in this fight. She would, she would throw the one, two, the two, uh, one, two, three, you know, but she kept, she kept her uh, combos uh, very simple. But you know what? It worked for her. It definitely worked for her. You know, Fabian tried to throw a little bit more, and she threw in more leg kicks. But you know what? It didn't matter because, I mean, yeah, she landed as well. But uh, Kim definitely landed the more effective um, strikes in round one. Round two was more of the same. I gave round one to Kim. I would probably give round two to Kim as well. Um, you know, Kim kept stalking Fabian, uh, finding openings for the right. And it wasn't like a straight right. It was almost like an overhand right. And, you know, one unique aspect, when you watch these two ladies, they, they would throw the right, and they would, like, throw it over so that they had to, like, curve, and they had, like, ducked with it. And um, it led them into each other's shots. But I would say that, once again, Kim definitely um, was able to find, to use that to her advantage better than Fabian was. Now, round three, I would I gave to Fabian based on the last two minutes. Um, Fabian was able to control the clinch a lot more, but overall, again, and I agreed with uh, the two judges gave it twenty nine twenty eight to Kim. One judge gave it twenty nine twenty eight to Fabian. I agreed with the two judges that they gave it to Kim. I thought she landed the overall more effective strikes of the fight, and I believe that. Uh, her strikes definitely dealt a lot more damage. You know, I'm not normally one for damage and judging damage in fights. But Fabia, you look at, if you were to look at Fabian's, you know, face after the fight, she got busted up. I mean, Fabian straight got busted up on her left eye. And it was all due to the right hand of Jiyeon Kim. Whereas Jiyeon Kim came out of this mostly unscratched. Uh, a cut opened up on her. Uh, left temple late in the third round during the uh, clinch exchanges. But, um, you know, I, I would say it was definitely a matter of Kim had the better game plan, which is amazing because her game plan was very simple. Her game plan was always to lure, to stalk Fabian down, and then open her up for the right hand. And, I mean... You hate to use this term, but she spammed the right hands. Kim was spamming the right hands, 
but it was amazing because Fabian was almost always open for them. And there were several times in the first, second round um, where Kim would hit Fabian with her right hand, and she straight up snapped her head back. I mean, it was very dr the dramatic fashion that these right hands lasted. It was um, it was really a treat to watch these two fight. Um, things to work on for each fighter, you know. Gian Kim, I liked I liked her footwork. I liked the fact that she kept her tin chuck good. You don't see too many fighters in MMA doing that, especially amongst the ladies. But Gian Kim, and I, I attribute this to coming from a boxing background, she kept her tin chucked. I mean, excuse me, her chin tucked in. And, you know, she showed fairly good use of fundamentals. Um, other than that, I think she needs to work on, you know, diversifying her skill set a little more. I'd like to see some more leg kicks from her. Um, I'd like to see some more diversity of combinations because not everyone is going to fall for the one, two, you know, the two, the two, one, the two, the one, the one, two again. Not everyone's going to fall for the same boxing combinations all the time. As she moves up in this division, and I would like to see her move up in this division, I think she's going to find some more sh uh, challenging uh, opponents who aren't going to be so susceptible to the same uh, very simple combinations. Uh, things to work on for Fabian. Well, obviously, you know, she kept herself open to those combinations. So she needs to look at what her opponent is going to do and better prepare herself for those. I think uh, also her leg kicks later as the fight moved on, she started to telegraph them more, and that was when Kim was able to block them more. So I'd like to see uh, Fabian, you know, lead with the strikes and then throw the leg kicks, or throw the leg kick and then follow up with some strikes a little better than she was. Um, matches to make. Fabian, she sunk to, geez, what was it? So Fabian sunk to four and four with two draws. She might not have a home in the UFC after this. Because he hasn't said anything about releasing her yet. 